Time now to debate some of the big stories of the week with the Inside Utah Politics panel. This week we have State Representative Carol Spackman-Moss and State Representative Jordan Tusher. Glad to have both of you on the show. Let's get right into the election results. They were officially certified during the week and the race we were talking about really all year long was at the top of the ticket, the race for Senate. We saw this fluctuate between 10 to 14 points during the two-week canvassing period. Senator Lee ends up officially winning by 10 points. Representative Spackman Moss, let's start with you. What, if any, message does that send because it's closer than any other race he's been in? Well, I think they picked uh, the candidate. McMullen was, uh, did really well, and I think he was experienced, and he certainly uh, caused Mike Lee to campaign more, harder, more appearances, and I know people got really tired of their commercials, but I, I thought it was a good thing for democracy to have a strong candidate running against uh, Senator Lee. And he did come closer than anyone, even a Democrat has in many, many years. Representative Tushra, let's bring you in. Do you see that as sending any message to the uh, now three-term senator? Well, I think generally, if you look at the race, um, we learned two major things. One, Utah is a solidly conservative red state, and that's not changing. Um, in, in a lot of ways, you can look at this Senate race as really just a second primary. You had two Republicans on the ticket that were fighting, one that was maybe a little more moderate, one that was conservative. Um, but in the end, 10 points is a landslide. I think the second thing is really looking at the strategy that Democrats had and, and whether we're gonna see this in the future um, in a lot of ways, I don't think it was a winning strategy for Democrats. You didn't have anyone at the top of the ticket that could really pound in those Democratic principles and, and, and sell the Biden agenda, which may have, have had an effect on down ballot races. Okay, that, that's an interesting point I want to dig a little bit more into with you, Representative Spackman Moss. Will Democrats ever go that route again where they bypass their own nominee in favor of an independent? I don't think so. I think it was an experiment, maybe a failed experiment, but albeit an experiment that um, was interesting to see it play out because there, I did see a lot of data that showed that there was uh, a rather thin uh, path to uh, winning, but I would much prefer to see a Democrat uh, because that person's talking about democratic values and things that matter to all of us and um, Evan McMullen was talking about, you know, he was the alternative, not so much specific values and issues, which I think it's important for voters to hear from a Democrat so they can make judgments uh, on their own. Representative Tasha, you bring up the fact that uh, the 10 point win is still a big one, and it is uh, for Utah standards though, it's really close for a statewide race when you take a look back at the last few decades. So when you take a, a look at this independent run, I know through sources that other big names in Utah politics were looking into that as like a beta test to see how an independent candidate could do. Do you see any path in the future to independent candidates in our state? Yeah, I would say not, not anytime soon. You know, certainly the demographic of the state is changing and we may see something different in 10 years. But I, I think the closeness of the race really came down to the fact that you had two conservative candidates. Uh, I think you could argue how conservative each one was, but you didn't have a Democrat at the top of the ticket. And had you had a Democrat at the top of the ticket, they wouldn't have lost by just 10 points. It would have been a much bigger margin. And so I, I, I think maybe the message for Democrats is they need to find more moderate candidates to, to put up and, and not try to sell such a hard. I mean, if you look in 2014, that was a pretty liberal candidate they put up and you had a much bigger 40 point uh, margin there. But still, I don't see any path for uh, a, a candidate that runs independent in the future. Representative Beckman Moss, your thoughts on an independent candidate, but also what Representative Tusher just brought up. Do you agree that the Democrats need to look to more moderate candidates in the future? Well, we have had moderate candidates for congressional races. Look at Ben McAdams, he's moderate. Uh, we didn't get a chance to see Kale Weston. He's a fine person. We didn't get enough opportunity to see what issues he would have focused on. But I really think the third party candidates um, are not going to succeed ever in Utah. And I was really dismayed that in a few cases in legislative races, the Utah United Party took enough votes away from one of our candidates who might have won that race. 
And I think it's just a, an exercise in futility and, and uh, it hurts candidates on both sides. I mean, we have a strong two-party system in this country and those who think they can start a third party, I think are not realistic at all. I don't think it's a good idea. Let's move to the state house. This will hit close to home for both of you. Democrats losing three seats, uh, one essentially through redistricting and then two incumbents losing their elections in Salt Lake County. Representative uh, Tusher, let's start with you. What impact does that have with you being part of a majority now growing in the state house? Well, well, I'm thrilled um, for the two new members of our caucus. Uh, to be quite honest, I don't think you'll see a, a major shift in going from a 59-seat majority caucus to a 61-seat uh, majority caucus. It's still a super majority. I think the bigger shift that you're going to see in the majority caucus is with some of these races that happened back in June. Some of the, the former colleagues that either retired or were replaced um, during competitive primaries that were replaced by much more conservative people. You think about um, you know, Trevor Lee coming in, Katie Hall coming in, Tim Jimenez coming in. Um, they're replacing much more moderate candidates and they have more conservative leaning views. And so I think generally our caucus will turn a little more conservative as we move forward. Representative Spackman Moss, your thoughts on losing three colleagues in <coughs> your minority caucus? Well, it, it's really unfortunate. They were all three wonderful uh, legislators, and thankfully Suzanne Harrison got the, won that seat for the countywide position on the council. Uh, but when a party gets a majority, a, such a large majority, it it's not the best for the people of Utah with a super majority. I think the bigger the majority, the more factions they break up into, and I don't think it's the best kind of governing. And I'm uh, I'm concerned about the more radical uh, candidates, the radical right, those who got in over majority or um, moderate Republicans who we all work together in so many ways Democrats are successful because we uh, have good relationships with Republicans and we come together on issues that affect all Utahns and benefit them. So I, I just think it's, I'm, I'm wary of it. I hope I'm wrong, but I think it will be more divisive and we'll have less of that cooperation. And the public wants to see us get things done for the benefit of people, not message bills but su substantive bills about that address inflation and taxes and uh, gasoline prices and everyday things in education that affect everyone. Uh, Representative Tasha, you, you bring up the idea of the majority caucus becoming more conservative, but we also saw points during that election that you refer to where we saw the speaker the majority leader kind of distance themselves from those candidates you talk about. So how's that dynamic going to play out? Yeah, I, I think that was really specific to the issues that were going on. It had nothing to do with the general philosophy that conservative values uh, are really leading Utah in the right direction. And so I, I think the leadership that we'll see in the House will continue to push those things. And, and maybe some of the issues that we had in the last session, like school choice, there'll be more support across the, the caucus and within the House um, to push uh, those issues forward. Uh, okay, we have a minute left. I want to give each of you 30 seconds on this. When you take a look at the House congressional races in Utah, the closest one was like 28 points. We used to have at least one competitive district in Utah. Representative Spackman Moss, do we even have that anymore? No, and it's a result of the most egregious example of gerrymandering I've seen in my lifetime. Um, it's really unfortunate because, again, I think the people of Utah are moderate, they're more centrist, uh, and you can have somebody on the Democratic side and on the Republican side that reflect those values as we did with Ben McAdams and others in the past. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry we're running out of time, but I want to give Representative uh, Tusher a few seconds on that as no, well. I, I agree with Representative Moss in the fact that they aren't going to be competitive in the future, but I think that's a reflection of our state. We're a conservative state. We're going to have conservative congressmen representing us in Washington. And I, I think what's, what's really important with that is that we could have gerrymandered in a, a more uh, competitive seat, but that's not what the state is. The state is a solidly conservative state, right. and that's what we'll see. We are going to have to unfortunately end it on that note. Really appreciate your insight. Thanks so much for being here with us this week. Thank you. Thank you.